Recording and blocking settings allow you to customize the types of data and activity that InterGuard will monitor and regulate. It's also where you'll be able to configure different screenshot settings as well as program and website restrictions for your users. Let's take a look at the different recording and blocking settings that you can configure from the user interface. From the InterGuard dashboard, we're going to go up to Settings in the main menu bar and click on Recording and Blocking. Recording and blocking settings are enforced based on the selected group, which you can see here at the top of the page. By default, if you don't have any groups, everybody will inherit the same rules. You can also clone group settings if two groups share the same recording and blocking settings. If you click on clone group settings, that'll bring up a pop-up window, which will allow you to choose a source group to copy the settings from. Now let's take a look at all of the different settings that we can configure from this panel. Investigation mode is going to allow you to choose whether or not you alert your users that their device is being monitored. By default, this will be turned on, meaning that the employee will not be notified that the device they're on is being monitored. If you choose to turn it off, a pop-up will come up letting you know that turning this off will display a warning message to the monitored user that they are currently being monitored. You can customize this message by clicking on Customize right here, filling out your customized policy, and then clicking Update. You can also customize that message from this blue tooltip icon. Below that are a variety of activities that we can choose to monitor on a device. Starting at the top, we have webmail, which would include clients such as Gmail or Outlook web app. You can choose to record the native Microsoft Outlook email application, common IM and chat software such as Skype for Business, Facebook, iMessenger. You can choose to record keystrokes for users, website activity, programs that they're using, as well as any documents that they have printed. File tracking may not be turned on by default as it is part of an add-on enterprise package for InterGuard software. You can also choose to record logon events for users and their devices. Below the recording settings, we'll see a number of different screenshot variants. To start, we have smart camera screenshots. If you click on the blue tooltip icon to the right of the switch, that will open up another panel. Smart camera screenshots are defined by programs and websites. So you'll only capture screenshots when a particular user is using what you define in these two lists. By default, you'll be in screenshots by program view. And over to the right, you can click on screenshots by website. If I wanted to add a website to this particular list, I would click on the add button. As an example, I'll put in youtube.com. Next, you'll select the frequency, that is how often you want to take the screenshots. There's a variety of options as quickly as every five seconds and as slowly as every 10 minutes. You can also select the duration of how long you'd like to take screenshots for. And again, this can be for as short as 30 seconds and you can choose to take screenshots for the entire duration that the user is in that website or in that application. Next is continuous screenshots. This will continually take screenshots on the user's device while they're active. You can set the interval of those screenshots to the right of the switch. Choosing intervals as low as five seconds all the way up to a full hour. Finally, there's alert word screenshots. These screenshots will be taken based on alert word categories and the alert words contained within them that you've predefined. Selecting the blue tooltip icon to the right of the switch will bring up an additional panel where you can choose to add specific alert word categories. And you can also define whether you'd like to take a screenshot when a user either types or views a word contained in one of the categories. You can choose one or both of these settings.
The block program settings can be configured from the blue tooltip icon to the right of the switch. From here, I'll be able to add any programs that I don't want employees to be able to access from their device. There's a couple ways you can add those programs. One is to search for the name. The other is to browse from the pre-populated resource list. You can choose to block these programs on a schedule. If I click up here on the right on scheduled profiles, I can define those schedules. So here I've created a test profile. What I'll do is define the typical work week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. I can also choose 24 hours. I'll click Add New. This will define the time ranges when an employee is not able to access those programs that we define. Web blocking allows you to restrict access to websites based on their category or by their specific URL. You can also whitelist certain websites if they show up within one of these categories that you've chosen to block. If you're not sure what category a website falls under, you can search for it within this box right here. As an example, I've checked facebook.com, which is categorized as a chat and instant messaging category. The category is blocked, but I'm allowing my users to access the website. If I choose to block by URL, I'll simply click on this plus icon here and add the URL. I can also choose to whitelist websites which allows me to configure certain websites that I would like to allow, even if they appear in a blocked category or blocked URL. I can also choose to block all websites except for the ones that I define in this whitelist.